Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you rapid texture and kind of how we go about doing it. There's a few different things. So what we're going to do is we can either start without a seed contour or we can. Essentially, it's going to be the, the original geometry that we're going to apply distortion factors to in order to create that rapid or random texture. So the first example I have is just a 24 by 24, so a 2 foot by 2 foot plate, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some texture to it. Without selecting anything, if we go directly into our rapid texture. There's a couple different things that we can do. The first one is this plate panels here. So if I want to panel out a wall, I can add multiple ones. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to match my plate to my size of the panel as well. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a two by two. So that way we have four panels rather than one. My overlap, I am going to leave at zero for this because I do want it to kind of flow from pattern to pattern. And then really our displacement factor, this is really where all of the information comes in. So the wavelength is going to be from crest of wave to crest of wave, so how gradual is our texture. And then our offset is going to be in between our texture, roughly how much. The horizontal amplitude, this one is tends to be confusing to begin with. And essentially what it is is how much of a distortion from the original line or geometry you have on screen. So since right now it's based off of a straight line, the closer the horizontal amplitude is to zero, the more true it will stay to that line itself. The vertical amplitude is going to be how far in the Z it's going to it's going to be produced. And with displacement, there's two different factors, so noise and wave. Noise is going to be each line is individually distorted, and wave is almost all in Z. One thing to note about the wave itself is going to be that it is actually going to double your vertical amplitude. So if you really want to cut a quarter inch into your plate, you need to make sure that that is set to an eighth of an inch on wave itself. But for this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do noise. We are going to check randomize because we do want to randomize the z-axis. If we want to create a texture but have the same z-depth, we would uncheck randomize so that way it's all at a consistent depth. And over here, our nine-point system, we're basing it off of the bottom left-hand corner, which is this icon right here. And we're going to produce all four of these panels at once. So if we click Apply, we're going to go ahead and we're going to produce these panels. And since I did tell it that they are four individual panels, as you can see, they are highlighted individually. And I can go ahead and I can toolpath these. This texture in particular is our, our sandblasted texture. So the trick behind that is the four displacement factors. The wavelength is going to be how, once again, how gradual your texture is. But then the next three, your offset, horizontal, and vertical amplitude, you want to keep the same value in for that, and that will produce the sandblasted effect. Okay, on the top, you will see that there are inconsistent as far as the lines go, but the more impressive feature is if we go into the front view, and we can see that there are individual lines here. And once again, because we clicked on noise, we are individually distorting them. And we get a lot of random texture throughout this, which we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply a tool path to. So now that we have our texture and we have it selected, the nice thing about rapid texture as well is you're always going to tool path it the same way. You may change out to a different tool but you're always going to toolpath it the same way. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into an engrave, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick a tool. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a 90-degree conic for this. I do have to make, that, make sure that follow contour down here is checked. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my depth. Now, at this point, our depth is arbitrary because we have follow contour checked on. What follow contour really means is follow the z-depth of the lines that are shown. So I do have to put in some kind of value because in does not accept zero. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to punch in some feeds and speeds inside of our parameters box. That way, 
it will actually machine it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in 300 for my feed rate, 150 for plunge, and 18,000. Now, these aren't set in stone. Each material is going to be slightly different. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that that is okay for, for this example. I'm going to click OK again. And now it tool passed that one section. Now, before we click off, a good habit is to hit Control G or Group. Because what Inroute does is after you apply a toolpath of rapid texture, it breaks the lines into individual segments again. So rather than having to select all these at once or individually, I can hit group so that way it can make it a lot easier to group or manipulate your parts afterwards. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to render this view so we can take a look at it and see exactly what's going on. And I'm going to pick a slightly different color so that way it renders better. Okay, I'm just holding shift, right clicking and dragging to spin or orbit in the perspective view. This is the texture that I would expect off of that machine. All right, so what we're going to do with this one is for the next couple panels, we're going to apply different tools. They are the same uh, geometries on screen. We're just going to apply different tools and look at the different textures that have been applied just by utilizing different tool profiles rather than just a, a straight comic. So for this one, we're going to come in here and I'm going to pick a ball nose tool and we'll pick, we'll go ahead and we'll pick a half inch one. Okay, once again, depth is going to be arbitrary as long as we have follow contour checks. I'm going to hit group. Okay, this one we're going to apply a different tool. Another neat little trick is instead of having to delete out a tool and adding a different one, I could also keep this follow contours checked, hit my three little dots to edit, and I could actually change my tool in here, and all the parameters will stay the same and just change the tool itself. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do just a regular in mill inside here. So let's go ahead and let's just cancel this one out. We'll add an in mill to start with. And this final one, we'll go ahead and we'll create one with a, a spherical tool or also known as a paper ball nose tool. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a geometry on screen, and I'm just going to do a section of each four of these panels rather than rendering all of them at the same time. So I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to just pick out that rectangle that I just drew on screen. So now that it's highlighted, if I go into the Simulate 3D, I can use the selected contours as a mask. I can up my DPI a little bit so I can get a cleaner render. And then I'm going to go ahead and press play. Okay, so there's one in the bottom left. This is our non the cons that we started with. This is going to be our big ball nose tool over here, our tapered ball nose tool over here, and then our regular end mill over here. So very quickly, I can see that with each one of these tools, I'm going to get a completely different texture depending on the profile of the bit. And that's just the way that rapid texture works because it's utilizing the profile of the tool in order to create that, that textured shape. And, however, you don't have to just work with noise. I can work with wave as well. 
So by doing that, I can come in here and once again just go back into my rapid texture. I'm going to take it back down to one panel. And inside here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this to an eighth of an inch so it still goes a quarter of an inch deep. And I'm going to up the horizontal amplitude a little bit and the offset as well. So now when I come in here, I can click apply. Now I can also pick a template that is predefined in here if I choose to and switch the values. One of the nice things about it is I can just hit the save button and it will be, create a template so I can use at a later date. But for this one, we're going to kind of plug in some different numbers. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to click apply. With Wave, the first thing you're going to notice is it looks very concentric as far as on top of the screen. But if I come into my front view, you're going to see that helix look, and that's what's going to give you that wave texture. Now, given the, the same principles and rapid texture between noise and wave, I can go ahead and I can select the texture itself, hit the engrave, and now I can just pick whatever tool I want. So for this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to that big ball nose tool. Okay, I'm going to click Follow Contour. And now I'm going to go ahead and in the perspective mode, I'm going to render this. And now this is the texture that I would anticipate coming off of my machine. And if we spin, you can see that it is doing that helix going in and out and creating those grooves. So for more of a symmetric pattern, I really like waves. Uh, however, there are a lot of interesting things that you can do with it. And one of the things that I really like to do is if you create a, a rapid texture, and once again, you can put in whatever parameters you want, but you can also come into the front view, and I can either lower this in my plate so I can create more of a texture, or I can cre create less by moving it up. And you also have the availability of rotating it so you can actually make it look like the texture is either fading in or fading off of the part as well. I'm going to rotate it just slightly. Okay, and I'm going to kind of squeeze this back down a little bit so that way the texture is not as tall. So I can really do a lot of manipulation factors outside of that as well. I'm going to move this up. Same toolpath, same parameters, same everything. But now when we render it, you're going to see that we're going to get a totally different look. It's going to look like the texture is either fading off from the left to the right or fading in from the right to the left. There's quite a few things that you can do with rapid texture even after you've produced the lines themselves. I can rotate them. I can move them up and down in the Z. I can expose more of the surface or less depending on how I want. And I can also do a few things inside the parameters as well as far as creating panels. One thing that I really like to do, uh, especially when I'm doing examples, are creating from geometry themselves. So as of right now, we've used just the rapid texture menu and nothing selected. But if I come in here and I create some random shapes, so I'm going to create some bigger and smaller circles, I'm going to make it look almost like Swiss cheese. So there are just some, some random circles on screen. And when we select them, when we go into the rapid texture menu, in route now knows that these are the parameters or the geometries that we have to base these parameters off of. So now, once again, the closer this is to zero, the more it'll stay true to those circles. So I'm going to lower this to about an eighth of an inch. 
a vertical amplitude. I'm going to go ahead and take it back up to a quarter because I'm going to change it back to noise. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click apply. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the selected so that was our seed contours. This is our architecture we just created. I'm holding shift to move it over to the right. And now I'm going to create the same thing, but I'm going to change the horizontal amplitude. So if I take this all the way up, let's say about half of the half of the wavelength to 1.5. Now you're going to see it's going to look more like a rose pattern or a rose bush inside here rather than symmetric circles. However, tool paths in them are going to be the same, and so we're just going to engrave. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick a conic tool for this. Or follow contours check. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simulate this so we can take a look at exactly what the two are going to look like. So you can see that the one on the left that has the high horizontal amplitude, it looks a lot less consistent and more randomized. Whereas the really low value almost looks like the raindrop, where it's actually just simply making the circle and spreading it out evenly. So again, there are a lot of things that you can do with rapid texture, not only inside of those parameters, but outside as well. And the last thing about rapid texture is you do not have to create just panels themselves. You can also go through and you can mask off different areas that, that you want to stay within. So if I have a specific geometry that I want, I want to stay within or stay out of, so if I have this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a, a star, Okay, and I'm going to group these together so that way it becomes a mass area. Now when we have our rapid texture, this is our panel we have in here, but I'm going to tell route. I'm just going to click on the area and it's going to say, okay, well now it's going to stay within that selected area. So now when I click apply, now I get texture behind that mass area rather than that full pattern. Now, there are a couple little tips and tricks along the way with using masking. For instance, if you're using a 90 degree conic to do your texture and your cleanup as well, you would create an eighth inch offset uh, if you're cutting an eighth inch into your material. So, depending on how deep you want to cut, it's going to be how big your offset is going to be. For instance, if this is the border that I actually want to keep, I would offset this first. So let's go ahead and let's inline this by an eighth of an inch. And this is the area that I'd actually want to mask the texture to, so that way I can use that conic to come back in and clean up around it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, instead of a closed geometry, I'm going to use an open, so just a simple line. I can use a closed or an open, but not both of them at the same time. So I'm going to use my open contour. I went to my texture. I want to make sure that my vertical amplitude is an eighth of an inch, because that's what we offset. 
And also, whenever you're doing this kind of masking technique, you always want to make sure your overlap is set to zero. And then now we're just going to click on the area. So now it's this area here. Go ahead and click Apply. As you can see, you still get that random texture, but now it's going in almost that 45 diagonal. Now I'm going to engrave. I'm going to use that conic tool. Make sure follow contours is checked on. And then inside here, I'm going to create a 3D engraved toolpath. It is going to be an eighth inch depth, because remember that was our offset. And what it does is it will come back in and it will actually clean up around this area. So now when we render, you should get a nice clean texture along with a 2.5D stop. So by, by utilizing the in route to rapid texture, there are a lot of different things that you can do. You can create wave textures, which are more symmetric in the Z, uh, whereas noise is going to be randomized per line. But you can also use masking text like this on screen in order to create complex signage or examples with just a little bit of work in the front end, but will make very nice pieces in the back end. Okay. All right. Hey, Jesse, we've got a question here from John. Okay. He said, can you, can you apply multiple textures to the same panel, or would that have to be separate files, like one texture in the background and one in the star? Okay. Nope. You can do it in the same file. That is a really good question. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to break it into layers, though, just so there's not a whole lot of uh, texture on the same screen. You can do it on one screen. It just makes it a little bit easier. So for instance, if I want to take, and I'm going to texture out this star, I would come in here and copy it. Okay, create a new file. Okay, and then I can come in here and I can use the mass area inside of here. So another texture. Let's go ahead and change up these parameters a little bit. We'll make it really close here, a little bit less here. And this is what we want to stick to. Okay. And we don't have to use a conic for this. Um, go ahead and I'll switch this to a clear orange ball notice here. And Make sure all contours is checked. Now we have rep text on the outside and on the inside of that star as well. Do we have any other questions? Not right now, but once Jesse's finished up here, we'll have a short Q&A session where you can ask any questions you do have about, um, about rapid texture or about Enroute in general. So if you think of any, just go ahead and type them into the chat window, and we'll, we'll address those. Okay. And then I'm, I'm ready for, for questions whenever, oh. whenever they pop up. Okay. Then folks, um we appreciate you we appreciate you being here. Uh, like we were saying, if you do have any questions, whether it has to do with rapid texture or just something else you've been wondering about en route, 
um, whether how to do something or if there's um, a more efficient way or shortcuts, um, just you'll be able to, to answer any of those questions that you have. Okay, not seeing any questions right now. I think you covered the rapid texture pretty thoroughly here. Well, I, I just want to say thank you, thank you all for your time and you know letting us teach you a little bit more about rapid texture and a little bit about en route. But like Stuart said, if you have any questions or anything along the way, feel free to reach out. We would be more than happy to answer your questions or or help with your problem. Yeah, and if you do have any um, suggestions for future webinars, any any topics that you'd like us to cover, feel free to send those to us. You know, we want to make sure that this is is useful and valuable for you. Uh, so we'd be happy to to take requests for for feature explanations. Oh, we do have one question here from David. He said, okay. "Can you just go over the different settings in the dialog box?" Yeah. So inside here, the rapid texture menu. So these parameters here. So your wavelength. This is going to be essentially how big this wavelength is. Here, so from crest of wave to crest of wave. So if I want the texture to apply to a really big panel, I would probably grow that wavelength so it's more of a flowing pattern. Whereas if this is a short value, you're going to see a lot more interest, a lot more up and down in your X and Y as far as your parameters go. Your offset is going to be roughly in between each line. How big of a gap are you going to leave? Generally, the bigger tool that you have, the larger that offset is going to become. Horizontal amplitude, that is from the original line. So if you don't select anything in and route, it bases it off of a straight line. So the closer that is to zero, the more of a straight line it will stay. The larger that number, the more that it will actually twist and curl that line, kind of like the rose bush example. So with the circles, with a low horizontal amplitude, we had it really close to a circle. When we upped that horizontal amplitude value, we got a very randomized pattern, and it was, it was no longer a true circle. And then your vertical amplitude, this is your Z depth. With noise, it's 100% your depth. With wave, it's 50% of your depth. And then randomized just means you are randomizing the Z axis, so it will move up and down. And then symmetric, if you were to check this, it would distort your factors just a little bit in order to make the panel actually symmetric. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do have one more question here from Nick. He said, is it possible to combine a photograph with a texture? I'm thinking of using a wave texture to show a photo. So you can do that. Uh, what that involves is that is more of a, a 3D with rapid texture over the top. Uh, you can do that. Uh, there's a, a few other things that have to go into that, whereas you have a 3D surface. So if you were to apply a photo like that, I could, if I have, let's say, a 3D surface, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in an image. Okay, so the first thing is you would convert the picture to the relief by adding the bitmap texture. So you're going to give it a height. And essentially we're turning that picture into the actual relief itself so it does have some, some depth to it. And generally when you toolpath 3D, you move it inside of the plate, but if you're using rapid texture over the top, you don't. You want to leave it on top of the plate, so that way I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a rapid texture that is going diagonal. And let's go ahead and let's move this to the bottom 
my chain cool down just to make it easy for ourselves. And I'm going to reduce this panel. Means it would be 16 by maybe a little bit under so that way we can match that panel. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, so now in our rapid texture, we're going to get our, it's going to look very random, but it's also going to follow that surface. So now, once again, same toolpath, same everything. So it's trying to pick up the Z inside of here as well. So you can see kind of where we went off of off of it as far as the, the little divots inside of here. I'd probably want to lower my offset on that value so I get a little bit more of that true texture, but you can see the lines in the wood right here. Okay, but that's that's pretty easy to go back and edit afterwards. So I know that you know I did get the three D texture, but it wasn't wasn't brought out enough. I can just come back in here, select my release and my speed contour, and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to say, okay, well maybe maybe this will help. Okay, I'm going to keep this closer to zero. Now we do have a lot more lines but I can represent that surface a little bit better because I'm going to be overlapping that quarter inch ball nose a lot more than I was before. And this is what this rapid texture would look like. So the rapid texture with 3D built into it as well. You can see the rapid texture that has the lines at that 45, but it also has the grooves of the wood that are running horizontally as well. Okay, do we have any other questions? Doesn't look like it, but Nick does say thank you, and we've had several several comments, um, people saying thank you for the webinar. Great, great information. Awesome, you guys uh, are very welcome. Yeah, and Brandon did say thank you. I'd love to see some relief webinars, so we can put okay. that on our on our schedule. Yep, we can definitely hey, well, do that. We just want to say thank you, everyone, for, for taking time out of your busy day to come to attend the webinar with us today. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate you sticking with us through the technical difficulties there. And we will see you next time. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Thank you, guys.